Hi everyone, uh, my name is Heather and I'm speaking to you from uh, Oroville, which is an international community in Tamil Nadu, South India. Um, my husband and I have been living here since 2006 on and off. I'm from Canada originally. Um, we came here to teach on an American university program that was studying uh, sustainability from a holistic perspective, so looking at all different dimensions of um, how do we create a better world, a more sustainable world from the inside out, so environmental, social, justice, and uh, personal development, looking at worldviews and, um, and questioning our cultural assumptions, um, so deep ecology, um, eco-feminist perspectives, things like that. As part of that, we used to take them to, um, to a sacred mountain here in a town called Tiruvannamalai. That's considered to be the body of God. And we would engage this inquiry of what does it mean to go on a pilgrimage um, to the body of God? And how do we, so foreign to the dominant Western materialist perspective. So this, this question has been with me for actually a long time. Um, after university, after my undergrad university, I lived in Japan for a couple of years. And I was teaching English, but actually what I was really interested in there was um, the Shinto religion and the connection to, um, to spirit in nature. And I visited a number of sacred mountains there and waterfalls and just, again, just be, really became aware. I was in my early 20s at the time and really became aware of just how much my own cultural um, assumptions were limiting my capacity to engage with um, sacredness in nature. And that uh, went on later. I um, went and did a master's degree at the California Institute of Integral Studies. And I studied, I was in the philosophy, cosmology, and consciousness program. And my real question again there was how do we um, re enter um, this enchant enchanted relationship to the more than human world and experience life as sacred, our bodies as sacred, the earth as sacred? again, from, uh, from the present, um, perhaps be drawing inspiration from indigenous traditions, also in our own ancestral lines, but actually engaging this for, for today. And that's been, I was fascinated to study, to learn at that time, a whole bunch of new, I came across a bunch of different um, new fields for me at the time um, that were uh, also looking at what it means to be a woman um, over not only in my lifetime but over generations of patriarchal conditioning and how do, do women recover from that, um, how it's affected our relationship to our bodies and to our uh, creative power and voice and how much that power, how much that is needed um, for the systemic change that's needed today. So after I did my master's degree, that's when I came to Oroville for the first time to teach on that program I was mentioning in 2006. And then I, actually prior to that, I started a PhD at uh, University of Toronto in adult education with a focus on transformative learning because I was just really interested in this question of, you know, wonderful that there's this, you know, potential like new worldview, but how do we actually educate for it? How do we live it in daily life? Um, and this was still a challenge for me because, again, like the conditioning is so deep. And even if I have the aspiration to experience something different, if it's so difficult for me, um, you know, what about people who actually aren't even aware of another way of thinking or, or seeing? So that's been, uh, that PhD has been, um, sort of on hold for a few years. Um, part of that research I did was I um, was studying Vision Quest um, in the deserts of California with a school called uh, the School of Lost Borders. And I had experienced a number of Vision Quests and their format is going out for four days and nights into wilderness alone, alone, you're the only human being, but with the understanding that maybe you're not alone and you can be in ceremony with the more than human world and with the ancestors and spirits, whatever comes, and that what's understood is that what comes to you in those four days and nights is received from more than just, you know, the, your skin encapsulated ego that you're actually receiving from the more than human world. And that became the focus of my research and I ended up interviewing um, eight women who had experienced Vision Quest over many years 
and who had found that it helped them to recover from patriarchal conditioning to some degree and enter a more um, participatory relationship with the world. Um, and panpsychism, that's when I came across Freya Matthews' work for the first time, for Love of Matter, um, as doing that research. So anyway, that's been on hold for a few years, and I've been engaged in other projects here in Oroville um, to do with women's empowerment and transformative education, youth, youth empowerment programs, that kind of thing. Um, but I'm now returning to it. I've decided to uh, finish it up. And that's why I'm taking this course, because I really am looking to go deeper into panpsychism, from, especially from Matthew's um, uh, understanding. And also, I've been really interested in um, Dr. Reason's work for a while. I spent some time at Schumacher College in the early 2000s. My husband was a student there, and I worked there. And um, I, yeah, I'm just really interested in the participatory paradigm, and bringing these two together is just a really, for me, a really exciting experiment. So I'm just really looking forward to um, getting to know you all through this course. Thanks. <laughs>